in the stand and I can't move it. Okay, welcome to a night of New Orleans music in Germany. You would never know we're in Germany by listening to these guys. So um, just to, just to uh, explain what's happening here, I was invited by Cafe Museum, where we are, Cafe Museum in Passau. It's a very old, famous museum uh, that has a cafe attached to it and a music room. So I was invited by Cafe Museum and the great, well-known, well-loved, universally appreciated Paul Zauner, who's playing the trombone for us. And I was invited by Cafe Museum and Paul to bring some New Orleans music here, uh, to play with some musicians. Most of the musicians are local here. Uh, some are from Prague, one is from the States. I'll introduce them in a minute. But um, I was invited to bring some New Orleans brass band music, rehearse the band, and put on a, a New Orleans show. And tomorrow night, not tonight, but tomorrow night, I'm going to cook some jambalaya for these guys. Yeah. If, they, <laughs> if they keep playing the way they were playing on the last song, they're going to get some jambalaya tomorrow night. So anyway, New Orleans brass band music. Um, just to explain something about the rhythm uh, to some of you, you know, most of the rhythms from New Orleans music, especially the music we're playing tonight, come from Cuba. The, the basic rhythms come from Cuban clave. Cuban clave, and if anybody doesn't know what the Cuban clave is, it's this rhythm. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> you want you want to play play something play some piano something so you can so you can see how that how that rhythm works. Okay, so that's that's like New Orleans' ver funky version of the Cuban clave. And what a lot of the, the brass bands did in, in uh, the 60s and the 70s and the 80s was to take the first half of that rhythm, which is... <laughs> and, and use that as a basic structure for a lot of the songs. So the last, the last song we played was based on exactly that rhythm, the tuba part. Play the tuba part from the, from the last song. Bum, bum. And, and on and on. So then the whole song is built off of that. So we're going to play something now. And that song, by the way, was from the New Birth Brass Band, Kermit Ruffins and the New Birth Brass Band. That song was called Crack House, in case you didn't figure out what it meant by the way it sounded. <laughs> so we're going to continue with a song called Five On It. And I believe, I do believe this was recorded and, and made famous by the Rebirth Brass Band. But guys, don't kill me out there if I'm wrong. So this is called Five on It, and it's, it's kind of having the same, a similar, uh, pl play, the, play the bass, the tuba line. Yeah, so it, it's, it's that rhythm and it's displaced. song is kind of based around that. So check it out. Five on it.
right, five on it. And if anybody can guess what that title means, five on it, and you write in to the, to the website page there, you win, uh, you win a, a, a free jambalaya meal at my house where I live now in Paris. You got to get there, but I'll cook it for you. So what, what's next? Ah, next, we're going to move on to a, another brass band, a third brass band. First was the New Birth Brass Band. Look those guys up. New Birth, the Rebirth. The Rebirth Brass Band actually came first. And then some next generation was the New Birth. And this brass band came along in parallel uh, called the, the Night Crawlers, the New Orleans Night Crawlers. And we're going to do a song from from them. Actually, it's a, I can't remember who wrote it, but it's a very, very old song called Keep On Going. Keep On Going, as we say in New Orleans. And this tune, it's a slower song, and it's based more on the simple early rhythms of rhythm of jazz that we call like two beat so um, you know it's like it, it's the it's the interpretation that the um, African Americans back in New Orleans had of the European March so the European marches were usually like a big accent on the downbeats like this For the for the music of jazz, when when the African Americans came to the states and when they were liberated, they started to assimilate this this European music, but with their own take on it, and they turned it upside down to put the emphasis on the off beats. So so like this. Instead of. So this is a tune based on that very old groove called Keep On Going, and we're going to feature Big L here, Leo, <laughs> Leo on, on tuba. Tuba and piano, yeah. this, right? Piano, right? Tuba. piano yeah. solo and tuba. This is, by the way, I should introduce these guys. We'll introduce everybody as we go, but this is Carlton Holmes on the piano, straight from New York City. We're really lucky to have him like pop down on this part of the earth at this moment. <laughs> He's gotta go back to the States on Monday. So we're gonna feature Carlton Holmes on tuba and Leo Gimulch, Milch, Milch, GM, Milch, Leo Gimulch on tuba. I'm going to send this one out to John Ivadakovich, too.
kind of keeping on going. I wasn't sure when I was going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> on the organ, Jan Korinek from Prague, Czechoslovakia, Czech Republic, excuse me. Ooh. Jan Korinek. 
you met these guys. Now the horn section from Wales by way of Prague. <laughs> and by the way, Prague is not so far from Passau. That's how these guys are all in the neighborhood. I don't know if any of you in the States know your European geography, but Passau is like in the farthest southeast corner of Germany. But it's not like the southeast of the states. <laughs> it ain't like Florida. <laughs> it's snowing outside. So this is from Wales, Ocean Roberts on tenor. Yeah. He's also helped us out with a lot writing a lot of the arrangements, and we couldn't have put it together without him. And on trumpet, really fantastic to meet this guy and play with him for the first time, Barney Gierlinger. And Barney, you're from uh, you're from Germany or from Austria? Austria. Austria. Which town? South, South of Austria. <laughs> Lienz. Lienz. Okay, southeast of Austria. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, right. Like I know my Austrian geography. <laughs> okay, I'll shut up here and we'll play in a minute. But before uh, Paul Zauner on the trombone. Paul is from Austria. Yeah. He's kind of the the. Um, uh, the godfather of jazz music in this part of the world. And we, we're lucky to have him here. And he's sounding great tonight. Perfect. Paul, you, you got to move to New Orleans, man. Okay. So. Okay, moving right along, we're going we're gonna to go to a tune called Ms. Lollipop by the New Birth Brass Band. <coughs> and the rhythm... It's it's based on this uh, syncopated clave uh, pattern. But it's a little bit turned upside down with the drum part. You'll you'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay? So Ms. Lollipop and we're going to feature Jan. Jan, we're going to feature Jan on organ and and Barney, right? Okay, here we go. Miss Lollipop.
Miss Lollipop, Jan Koronek on organ, Barney Gerlinger on trumpet, and Ocean Roberts on saxophone. We're going to slow it down a little bit, and we're going to do, we're going to go back now. We're going to stay, actually, with the New Birth Brass Band. And we're going to do a slower tune of theirs called D-Boy. And, in fact, uh, you can notice that the rhythm is based on the same half of the clave, you know, the... The, the tuba part is not going to play the whole rhythm. Let's play the tuba part together. I, I'll play this. I'll play this. Uh, this bass, this Cuban rhythm, all the time, and you play the tuba part. So, I mean, to me, I mean, the New Orleans musicians, I mean, they don't, they don't create songs thinking of Cuban clave, but it's just in the fabric of the music, and, you know, to me, that's what it sounds like. So, so here is D-Boy.
Here for the guys, D Boy. Now we're gonna take you to another brass band called the Treme Brass Band, and they wrote a song called "Down in the Treme." Treme is the neighborhood that's just on the north side of the French Quarter. It's like probably like one of the very original. Uh, residential neighborhoods of New Orleans. New Orleans used to be just only the French Quarter, just like a, tr a rectangle of streets. And probably, I think the first residential neighborhoods opened up just to the north and just to the east. So Treme is one of the oldest neighborhoods, has the deepest tradition, the best cooking. Um, Dookie Chase, Dookie Chase's restaurant is there. If anybody's going to New Orleans, you got to check out Dookie Chase. You got to check out um, Henry's Soul Food Kitchen on North Broad Street. And you got to check out Piku's Donuts. But I think they somebody told me they closed. Anyway, that's enough about New Orleans. This this show was this this uh, song was adapted for the television series that was about New Orleans called Treme, which is a kind of half biographical, half fictional um, accounting of New Orleans post-Katrina, from right after Katrina and the years going by building up. I think it's been running on TV for for some years now, Trey May. So you can catch it, and, and this is the theme song from Trey May. And guess what? It's based on the, on the clave as well, on the first little part of the clave. So... The, the tuba part, if I'll play the, the drums first. So the tuba part, again, is... That's the basis for the whole song, and you see what, what we all put on top of it. All right, here we go. It's on, it's on you, Leo. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
May. Check it out on TV, on Netflix, or Apple TV, or, well, actually, don't check it out. When the virus is over, go there. There's no substitute. So, again, before we go, I want to reintroduce the musicians. Jan Koronek on the organ over there, and now you can see he's picking up a guitar multi-talented musician. Carlton Holmes from New York on piano. You guys gonna clap or what? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, man. <laughs> Just wake up around. Leo Gmelch. Gmelch on tuba. Unbelievable tuba player. Really surprised to find him here down in Bavaria. Ocean Roberts on saxophone. Barney Gerlinger on trumpet. Yeah. Yeah. And the one and only heart and soul of jazz music in Austria and southern Germany, Paul Downer on yeah. trombone. Yeah. And we thank everybody else. We want to thank the Cafe Museum for, for going through all of the work, the paperwork and everything to get this thing rolling and get it sponsored and to have it offering free to you. I think you can go on the website and make donations to Cafe Museum if you like. If you like the music, tip in a little bit. All right, so we're going to end the night with, we're going to go back to the Rebirth Brass Band, and we're going to do a, so a song called Soul Second Line. And this song was actually featured on an album of a friend of mine, an organ player named John Grove. And his band was called Papa Grows Funk. And I believe it was on a record called Shaken. John, don't kill me if that's not it. Shaken, I think. Or, yeah, Shaken. And so this was like a, a mixing brass band with electric instruments. So here is Soul Second Line. And by the way, if you're not dancing yet, you might as well turn off the computer, right? <laughs> Okay, every we we watching, you know we watching back. Anybody has an Apple computer? We watching back through the computer. We watching at you. So everybody up, all right? Everybody up. I, yeah, no, you you too, you up, and you up. Here we go.
start out with some percussion. Let's hear it. I'll start out with some percussion.
Thank you all very much for all the guys. Cafe Museum, Passau, Germany, keeping the spirit alive here. And once again, you can go online and make donations. However small, it helps. It'll help keeping this whole music thing going. They've been having concerts like this every weekend for quite a while, and they'll be having more in the future. So like them on your Facebook page, mark it down, and uh, see y'all later, alligator, as they say in New Orleans. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Good evening from the Cafe Museum Jazz Club in Passau. I am Nora and tonight I'm going to talk to the saxophone player Ocean Roberts. Hello Ocean. Hi Nora. Hi, welcome. Thank you. It's uh, great to be here. Mm. I, I love the Cafe Museum. I love Passau. I love all the people here. Cafe um, Museum loves you. Well, I'm very happy to hear it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorite places in the world to play and to hang out and it's such a lovely community of, of people and uh, musicians here and it's really a treat to come here every time. So thank you for inviting me. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, Oshin, looking at your haircut situation, <laughs> you... One might think that, that you are a fan of the Beatles, but your biography shows that, um, that you're very much into jazz. That's true. Um, but I, I do really love the Beatles. Mm. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the Beatles. Um, that's not particularly why I've got this haircut. It's more a, a case of, of <laughs> not being very good at, at having my hair cut. It's it's more or less a sort of accidental hair situation. Oh, I see. It's yeah. rather than intentional, I mm. suppose. <laughs> yeah. If that makes sense. <laughs> and what about the jazz? Um, well, I've been I've been into jazz uh, for most of my life, I suppose. I um, I started to really get into it when I was about nine years old. I heard uh, Glenn Miller's "In the Mood" on the radio. And I, I was so into it, I, I absolutely loved it. And I remember asking my mother, what's that, what's that instrument that's playing the tune? What, what, what's playing it? And she said, I think that's a saxophone. And, and, um, and then the next time uh, I was watching TV uh, and saw a saxophone playing, I, my mother pointed out, that's a saxophone. And I was like, wow, that's so cool. <laughs> And so my interest in, in, in jazz or swing music uh, coincided with me really getting into the saxophone. So, so I, I, uh, I started playing the saxophone when I was nine as well because my parents could tell that uh, I was into something and, and they thought that music was a, a, a good thing to be into. My father is a, an opera singer and my mother's family has generations of, of musicians so they wanted to encourage it and and they did and and it just carried on from there really mm. um, and then I got more into uh, bebop and and the music of the, of the like straight ahead jazz you might say from the, the 40s and 50s um, through through my teachers and uh, I had a great saxophone teacher called uh, Dick Hamer, who was a great jazz player as well. And and he he said, "Oh well, you should listen to Charlie Parker and and John Coltrane and Miles Davis." And and so I I did, and I loved it, and it just sort of snowballed from there, really. So you you were at the right time um, in the right place. Yeah, I think so. I, I think I was very lucky to to meet the right people and 
and also listen to the to the the right music you know um it it seemed to all happen i i mean i was i I got into Charlie Parker around the same time as the film, the Clint Eastwood film, Bird, came out. And I know it's quite a controversial film among musicians, but as a kid, it was like, wow, a film about Charlie Parker, you know, he, like, he, must, be, he must be great. And, and, and it was just all very exciting to me, you know. And, and, um, and I, I, was, I started out on alto, and I played alto for years. Um, and then I, I was very lucky to be um, a child actor. I got a role in a, in a television series when I was about 11. Oh, in, in Cardiff? In, yeah, in yeah, in, 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 in Wales. And, um, but it was a net, network series that went out all over the UK, mm -hmm. and I made quite a lot of money oh so, but you didn't uh, want to become an actor though well i i i did to a certain point but then um because i did it un until i was about 15 uh 16 um but after my first uh, acting job i i went to my teacher uh, dick hamer and said what's the best saxophone money can buy and and he said well it's a selma mark six but you can't buy them anymore because they don't they don't make them and um and my father had a a, a magazine called the exchange in mart which was a, a small ads newspaper that people would sell privately sell lots of different things and i was looking through musical instruments and i saw a selma mark six tenor and i wanted to play tenor by that time And um, and I was like, wow, I can I can afford to buy this with with my money. But my parents wanted me to save the money for when I went to college or or something like that. But I really, really begged and begged to let them to let me uh, buy the instrument, and I and I did. And that's that's what I play now. I've had that instrument since I was 15, so oh. it's the same instrument. And um, yeah, and and. The more I got into music, the more I, I realized, and the more I worked with other actors, I, I realized that actually I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't such a great actor. And, uh, and I felt like I was, I was a better musician and it was, it was more exciting to me, you know. So, so I, I, I sort of went down that route, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I don't know about your acting skills, but I, <laughs> I know about your other uh, musical skills. <laughs> yeah, and um, it, you, you've been moving around a lot. Um, is there a place that have most influenced you? Um, well, I suppose uh, early on, uh, once I, uh, when I was 18, I, I, I went to study jazz at the Royal Academy of Music in London, and... Before then, most of the musicians that I played with were, were older than me. I, I had one friend that we were both into jazz together and we had a band and stuff, but, but most of the musicians that we played with were, were already adults by then, already professional musicians. And, and, um, and being in London, I, I met you know, kids my age that were also into it and, and, and we, we formed you know, lifelong bonds and we st I still play with a lot of um, my uh, uh, academy students that, that I, I went to college with and, and we're still great friends now so I suppose in terms of, of influencing uh, my, my growth and development that was a really big uh, experience for me and, and then I lived I continued to live there for, for another seven years um, and then moved back to Cardiff and then more recently I moved to the Czech Republic and that's opened up a, a whole other world of, of great musicians and great people that, um, that I feel very lucky to have met and played with. Um, so yeah, it's everywhere I've been it's, it's been a great experience for me, you know. 
playing and, and meeting great musicians. And, and this likewise here, you know, mm -hmm. I've, I've had so many great opportunities to play with people mm -hmm. that I never would have had mm -hmm. if I hadn't come here um, initially with Jan Kozinek, the, uh, the organ player that's playing, and bass that's playing with us on these, mm -hmm. these gigs. So uh, it's thanks to him, really, that I'm, that I'm here. Um, Oshen, um, what is music, maybe especially jazz, doing to people? Oh gosh, that's, a, that's an interesting in question. In your opinion today? Well, I think the fact that what makes jazz possibly different than a lot of other styles of music is that it's it's collective improvisation and you know to a certain point obviously there are structures and 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 certain rules and stuff that people adhere to but essentially the musicians are hearing the music for the first time at the same time as the audience are hearing it so it's like a and i think that that makes it a, a bonding experience you know, and my favorite rooms to play jazz in are, are small rooms where where you you feel really close to the to the, the people in the audience, and that they can. It's like they can experience the the excitement and joy that the musicians have from going through this this process. You know, and and I think that that's that's the magical thing for me about jazz. Is that that you just never know what's what's going to happen, mm -hmm. even even when you're playing it, you know, which is just That's amazing. That's also so interesting about life, well, exactly. <laughs> generally. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and and maybe maybe that's that's what the connection is. Is is like the music is a reflection of of our life experiences. It's just another interpretation of the the same thing, mm -hmm. I suppose. If that makes any sense. I'm not sure yes, it does. Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And do, can you tell me, can you name one of your favorite tunes? Oh gosh, yes, I can. I could name hundreds. Um, just one. Just Please. one of my favorite tunes. Um, I really like. Oh my goodness me, <laughs> there are so many. You're really putting me on the spot. Uh, I really like, um, uh, Four, a tune that I think Miles Davis made famous, but I'm not sure whether he actually wrote it. It may have been written by uh, Eddie Cleanhead Vinson, mm -hmm. who was a great saxophone player and blues singer. Um, but that's that's just a great tune. Ocean Roberts, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>